Please join me for our entrance verse found on page four of your missile Your merciful love, O oh God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O oh God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to Amen. God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For all those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard one, and I heard the one who was speaking to me say, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Amen. Respond to the word of song. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you I lift up my eyes who are enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of the servants are on the hands of their masters. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, 
so are our eyes on the Lord, our God, till he hath pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, waiting for his mercy. Have pity on us, O Lord, have pity on us, for we are more than sated with contempt. Our souls are more than sated with the mockery of the arrogant, with the contempt of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, waiting for his mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am made strong. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary? and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. In our first reading this morning, you heard how God announced through the prophet that the people had been a rebellious lot. And he said, they've always been a rebellious lot. And today I'd like to look at that and pick up where we left off. Now, this is a, a, a theme that I really want to pursue over the next couple of weeks. So uh, Deacon Groves won't be preaching next week. I'll, he'll preach sometime later and he'll probably preach multiple weeks in a row to let him catch up. But uh, I really, I want to focus on this thought because what happens at the foot of Mount Sinai is extremely important. When we left off last weekend, I had explained about this liturgy that they had, a sacrifice and how we witnessed one very similar, but in our understanding, a more full sacrifice. It's a, it's a sacrifice involving Jesus himself is both the one offering and the one being sacrificed. Well, after that took place, Moses ascended back up to Mount Sinai. And he's there with God, and it says he stays 40 days and 40 nights. 
It's a, it's, that's a biblical term to say a long time. And while he is up on the mountain for a long time, the people become restless. They want a God that they can follow. So they go to his brother Aaron and say, make us a God that we can follow. Of which you remember he gives them, he asks for all their gold and precious uh, stones and they construct the golden calf. And I, I find there's one particular that I don't know if you really ever caught it. I think it's one of the funniest lines in all of scripture is when Moses comes down and he confronts Aaron about the golden calf. Aaron's response is, you know, we just took all this gold, we threw it into the fire, and look what popped out. <laughs> Amazing. You know, I've got, I feel like that's on one of those, uh, was it those commercials that sell us the products on TV? Amazing, look at what it can do. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't work that way. And Moses has them deconstruct the golden bull, spread the golden flakes over the water and have the people drink the water. To really solidify, all of that is waste. It's waste. Now, I recently read an article by a minister, and the minister was harking back to his youth, in which he said that one of his teachers, a professor at a, either a high school or a college he went to, had told him about societal changes, and that when a society changes, these changes can be drastic. And the longer it takes for a society to change, the longer the more drastic is the change. And he said about how when a society changes, there are a lot of people that want to live in an imagined past. They want to go back to the imagined past. But as he said, life does not live in reverse. It's always moved forward and let's move forward. <coughs> I thought, well, that's, uh, that's all well and good. I think we can all agree life moves forward. It doesn't live in reverse. You can't go back. H.G. Wells' Time Machine is just a book. Great book, but it's still just a book. All of that is in the past. You know, there's no way to go back. But there is an underlying thing there that we have to explore. When the children of Israel wanted the calf, wanted something that they could worship. Aaron and those artisans with Aaron created the golden calf, very much like uh, the God of uh, vitality that they would have had in Egypt. So very much. Now, this is the first generation. So was this first generation looking for an imagined past that they could go, oh, how great it was? The only time they do that in the entire Exodus is when it comes to their bellies. Oh, how great it was we had, and they'll go down all the foods that they had to eat back. We had water flowing. We had all these great things. Yes, I know we were forced labor. I know that it was bad. Our kids were being thrown into the river, the first male, the males, but boy, our bellies were full. Now that's totally opposed. Uh, it's a different idea than going to an imagined past. And I thought to myself, there's something odd about that statement. And it hit me like a ton of uh, lead. It's really, a statement like that is directed toward you and I. Not them, you and I. And I'll give you an example. We've started here, if you remember the Latin Mass, pre-Vatican II. You'll see here, we have ladies who are wearing the man mantilla, the old chapel veils again. You'll see where we've allowed people to start receiving communion, kneeling 
again and receiving on the tongue. You'll see that besides all of that, men and women are starting to show up early, stay a little bit later. They're starting to dress a little nicer. And people would say, we're going back to an imagined past of pre-Vatican II. Uh, even my outfit would qualify for that. And that we can't go back. We must go forward. We must be more progressive. That's really what's going on in the Catholic Church now. There's a, if I may use the term, there's a civil war that's taking place right now between two groups, those who feel we have to go forward and those who say, wait, hold it, where are we? And I fall in the latter category because the way my mindset is, if, uh, if we decide we're going to go from Mobile to Montgomery <coughs> and we get on I-10 going east-west instead of I-65 going north-south, and we can travel 100 miles an hour, we can speed on I-10 going east-west, and we can make great time, but we're not going to be any closer to Montgomery because that's north-south. So why don't we, if we really want to be progressive, if we really want to be the most progressive, why don't we go back to figure out where we went wrong? Maybe we took the wrong road to begin with, and we need to go the other way. So that's my mentality. And I look at this and I say, why? If we stop and put ourselves back into that mentality at the base of Sinai, what got the people in trouble? They're bored. They're restless. What they're living at that moment is no longer speaking to them here in their heart. And they're looking for something. And you see that today with people who are fluctuating between various denominations, various philosophies in life. People are looking for something. Something that will speak to them where they're at. Something different. But what have we done? We're all becoming the same. Do you ever notice you go to some of these mega churches or if not, watch them on the television. If not, watch them on YouTube. Tell me, what differentiates them? It's pretty much the same setup in most places. What separates them in the music? Pretty much they're all singing the same songs and those songs sound just like you would hear on an easy top 40 listening thing. Where are the hymns that told a story like Faith of Our Fathers? Or even if you would translate Tant Amerigo into the English, at least told a story of theology of God. And we find that we're doing that again. We're starting to subtly pick up more modern cultural ideologies, thinking that if we just adhere, if we make it more exciting, more something that you are familiar with, then that will speak to you. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe what we need and what Israel needed at that time was a newer version of worship. And that newer version was to reconnect with their religious identity that they've always held. Meaning children of God, followers of God, not followers of all the other various gods of the various nations, followers of God in their unique individual ways, being children of Abraham and holding fast and true to that. And you'll see that as they progress, that is going to be the thing that'll keep them most in line. Whenever Israel from this moment on, and God is going to set it up, I'll explain it to you next week how he does. But from that moment, whenever they hold on to their identity, the strongest is when they are doing the best as a people, as a nation. It's when they stop 
when they decide to be like everybody else around them, that's when they fall the most. And despite all of that, despite what happens here at Sinai, when they fall into apostasy, idolatry, despite what will happen as they proceed further and the many, many times in their history they're going to fall away, despite all of that, God will still bless them as God still blesses us, despite the many times we, like them, fall away. God doesn't bless us and love us because we never failed, because we're perfect in every way. He loves us despite the fact that we fall. Despite the fact that they committed idolatry and apostasy, despite the fact that we go our own separate ways, we're no different from Adam and Eve. We want it our way. I gotta feel like a Burger King guy. <laughs> but besides all of that, God still blesses us, still loves us. So that's the thing I want you to reflect upon in this coming week is what can we do to tap in again into our religious identity as Catholics? And what can we do, even if it means a little extra sacrifice, to help remind us of God's blessings every day and of our need to respond to his blessings by treating both him, our neighbors, and ourselves with love and compassion. Now, mighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs>
And let us pray for you. Our parishioners from St. Thomas and St. Bridget's, you who are here today and those who will watch on video, for all of you and for your needs, this Mass is being offered today. We pray to the Lord. Lord Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise and honor for the Blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. We'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, God of forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God of Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord set aside the Protestant demands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the gospel mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, and the Son of Christ, blessed be you, and the name of the Lord, and the Son of Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At his command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. And blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Thomas, Saint Bridget, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop the art of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. To await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take the grace of this world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the grace of this world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen. 
Please join me for our communion verse found on page 89 of your missalette. We'll do the second reading. Come to me, all who are labored and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the price of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Before you leave, I would like to wish you all a happy Fourth of July, and I hope you have a great day with your family today. Thank you. Thank you. Prayer to St. Michael for our families. Holy Michael, our angel, defend us now. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of hell. May God. Repeat
rebuke him we not willing to pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, for us into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praise and protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Bless us, be God. Bless us, be God. Let's go. 